Hello, this is Michael Hexter, and welcome to Politics 2100 here on YouTube. So I'm dealing in this episode with a news story that has short-term significance, I think, for anyone who looks at this video in the United States. And also, but then longer-term uh, implications for uh, politics and uh, in the United States and also just the health, I would say, of our um, uh, government or governing uh, features of, you know, in in the government, okay? <laughs> anyway, so um, this story is about uh, COVID-19 and the monitoring of COVID-19 that the uh, Centers for Disease Control does. And I am, uh, I was, Called, my attention was called to this by a tweet by Eric Feigel Ding, who's a epidemiologist who is kind of a watchdog for epidemiology overall, and and particularly has played a uh, a very crucial role in uh, alerting people about COVID nineteen and develop developments in COVID nineteen. Uh, he's kind of a popularizer of, uh, or or also an advocate for better public health in the United States, and so. Um, anyway, he uh, alerted me via a tweet, which I'll link in the description box, to two intersecting stories regarding the CDC. Number one, the CDC is planning to stop uh, tracking community spread of COVID-19 in, uh, uh, in, on May the 11th. So when the uh, emergency will expire. In other words, the COVID emergency is supposed to expire on the 11th of May. Um, that uh, a this this tracking of what's called community spread, which gets us some of the more granular county by county data that appears every week. Um, uh, you know that will no longer be available. Uh, there may be monthly updates that come from uh, physicians uh, uh, that are uh, reporting, it's still reportable to report a COVID-19 illness, but uh, for instance, test results and that kind of thing, which has already been diluted by the fact that people test at home, I test at home, other people test at home uh, for COVID-19. Um, and so they don't necessarily report if they're ill uh, or they have a positive test so and so on. And, and that isn't reflected in the statistics. So anyway, so I'm relying on Feigl Ding's alarm that, um, uh, uh, that, the, um, that this will be removing uh, a crucial piece of data for people to uh, monitor their behavior and to see if they need to protect themselves um, uh, against COVID infection. If for, for whatever reason, we see a rise in COVID um, uh, prevalence or, or the, the, the concentration of the virus in our air that we breathe. And so, um, at particularly in enclosed spaces and so forth and so on, in workplaces um, and in social g gatherings, that kind of thing. So, um, but the, the other news that makes this uh, more alarming is that and, and ironic is that at a conference, the Disease Detectives Conference, which happened uh, the, the 24th to the 27th of April, uh, so just a few days ago, uh, there were there was an outbreak of COVID-19 there. So in other words, among a population of people who are probably 100% vaccinated and also uh, and vaccinated with the latest bivalent um, uh, vaccines, uh, and also probably maybe even masks, some and so forth, so on, are pretty maybe more cautious, much more cautious than the the average person. Um, uh, that these uh, people, uh, that among these people, that there were there's a COVID outbreak. So even in late April of 2023, we have in this population that we don't expect to get. Um, uh, you know, have be uh, reckless with regard to COVID-19 or just a general hygiene that 
that they would um, uh, get COVID and that they would have to isolate and so forth and so on. And, you know, an outbreak of three or four or five. In any case, I'll put links in the description box to the reporting on this from CNN and the Washington Post. So it, um, it, 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 it's alarming that, that we have this happening even now and that we, in some sense, that we haven't learned from uh, COVID-19. We haven't, and, and that, so these two different actions by the CDC seem to be saying, basically, we're going to do the minimum, the absolute minimum required by, uh, you know, this emergency declaration. So we're just going to let everything lapse. And it's part of a, uh, a trend that's have been happening over the last year and a half or so, where we have the Biden administration, which is supposedly more rigorous in its uh, public health measures than the Trump administration before it, is um, politically uh, caving to their own needs politically to get reelected and so forth and so on, but also to uh, constituencies that are uh, anti-public uh, health measures. And so this gets me to the second um, uh, part of, so this is obviously, you can use this data any way you like. We could be lucky and we could get lucky in terms of our continuing that the prevalence, that the concentration of virus continues to diminish and we are essentially out of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic within a couple of months, okay? So, uh, it's being treated now in the new regime as another infected, uh, a reportable, but still just like flu and so forth and so on. It's not part of this structure where we're giving people as granular a notice as we can, given all the problems with home testing and people not reporting and so forth and so on, uh, if they are ill uh, or, you know, unless they become uh, severely ill and they need, then they get hospitalized. Okay, so hospitalizations will con continue to be tracked and that's uh, easy to to track. But that that's a lagging indicator uh, of of infection and of of the prevalence of the virus uh, uh, in the population. So they will be treated. They will be testing wastewater. So that's something that is a forerunner of potential up surges in prevalence, but it also, there it, you're missing some pieces in between of that. So anyway, so closing that, so you can use that as you will in your life if you can structure your life accordingly, but then the more um, uh, general problem there is, is that I see in Politics 2100 and also that it, it, has a, my vlog portion of Politics 2100 has has emerged during the COVID-19 pandemic. In other words, I've started doing it then, that, um, uh, that public health is one of the key indicators of the, the you would say, the uh, administrative health of uh, a government, of a, of a system, of a, of a social system, of a civilization, you could say. In the civilization, to you need a state to be doing things to have a civilization. This is something that the right wing in their cosmology, in their ideology, they they see helped along, by the way, by some bad social science originating in economics, neoclassical economics in particular, that somehow there's an economy or a society and upon it is encrusted a state. But instead, the state is really a part of your the uh, the state being governments, okay, governments and their bureaucracies and so forth and so on, um, are part of a civilization and are and create the 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 grounds in which you can have, among other things, trade and so forth and so on and all this the bartering and the 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 that that supposedly in neoclassical economics is the basis, the foundation, what happens before you have a government coming down and quote unquote regulating this sort of free market that uh, that spontaneously occurs. So anyway, so the 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 um, public health is one of the fundamental background activities of the state, as well as road building and so forth and so on, as and and uh, uh, you know regulation of of international international trade 
you know, tariffs and so forth and so on. It's some of the, and, and a military and, and national defense, all these things are, which is more visible to the right wing. But anyway, but the, the or even though it's the part of this, this top-down incrustation or this, this, this imposition on the natural uh, 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 market, the natural uh, uh, relationships, you know, again, in, the, in their ideology. So anyway, but public health is a, is a, uh, is a determinant. In other words, the, the creation of sewer systems and so forth and so on. And, you know, all of these things are part of uh, uh, the basis of having a civilization, having a place where people can, can interact with each other and, you know, trade with each other and, you know, whatever, trade their labor in terms of, and then, you know, become employed by other people or whatever it is. And so, and, and people then can sell goods and sell them and, and, and just, you know, uh, send them out to be sold to, to customers uh, via roads and other means that are um, co-created by government or regulated, heavily regulated and, and, and made safer by government, made more uh, of a, of a, uh, of a, you know, a go, a good risk, in other words, for a business to, to, to be able to do that work. So, or do that, um, commerce. So anyway, so public health is one of those basic things. And in the pandemic has become a target of the right wing. And we see, unfortunately, uh, Democrats, in particular, the right wing of the Democrats, and, but also just in general, the, the, or the, Biden is, you know, he's maybe a center of centrist Democrat, center of the Democratic Party. I consider him to be generally center right. In certain issues, he's maybe center left, but his instincts, and certainly he's very much a uh, a, a guarantor of the um, of the privileges and and power of corporate elites and so forth and so on even though he also talks as if he's, a, you know, uh, representing the little guy and he does certain things that are for the little guy. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the concessions that, um, uh, uh, that are made to the, the right wing and to, to the, uh, the hysteria around public health measures like mask wearing and lockdowns the very few lockdowns that we had or hardly we hardly had any had any lockdowns in the United States at all even during the early part of the pandemic but anyway the 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 exaggeration of any public health measure as being intrusive and terribly you know uh harmful to people and so forth and so on that that is um continuing on uh, with this 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 giving in to the 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 doing the bare minimum in this case rather than continuing to monitor monitor COVID-19 as a potentially dangerous new pathogen even though it's you know three years with us now but it's still you know of a of a different type and it is rapidly evolved and and we still see about a thousand deaths a day in the United States from it so it's not, uh, it's especially for older people, but also increasingly we see effects on, in other words, the mortality for young people has gone up in recent um, uh, months. Uh, so it's not something that is uh, something to be easily shrugged off, especially for people who specialize in these kind of things. In other words, public health uh, officials. So anyway, the... Um, the general concession then of uh, government giving up on government services. In other words, one of the government services is monitoring diseases and trying to prevent them and trying to manage and, and create, you know, intervene at times in certain processes that have become independent of, you know, that are not part of uh, government functioning on a regular day to day basis, but the government, can step in sometimes and say you know don't do that because of public health so forth and so on so anyway uh that has been uh mostly conceded to the right wing and to their sensitivities and to their ideology and um and i think uh 
there needs to be a forthright uh, defense of uh, government um, uh, stepping in sometimes when in a crisis. Now, right now, we are not looking at so much at this this as a uh, emergency, and this health emergency is um, supposed to expire on May the 11th. But we need to at least be prepared for future pandemics and also just make sure we usher out this pandemic in an exp as, as expedient a manner as possible. And so uh, we need better data and we need to keep monitoring it as well as other emergent uh, illnesses that are like a fungal infection in Las Vegas. Uh, I will put a link as well. This is also from via Eric Feigelding. In any case, um, I just wanted to make this, even though this vlog, this, this channel is not devoted to public health per se or to COVID-19, uh, it's a public issue of public health that is very important and it, for everybody in our society. And it's also uh, an example of how uh, government is part of, you know, our survival and our thri eventually thriving and also our commerce and so forth and so on. And that, you know, it's not a, just a in a position or it's also a guarantor or a, a ground creates the ground for which you could then, for instance, do commerce. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, feel safe in the public, in the, in the agora, in the whatever, in the the uh the both the public sphere more generally the civic in civic life and then also in specifically in mar the market portions of that civic public space uh, or even the virtue well obviously in in cyberspace you know that biological element is um is uh almost uh, is reduced or eliminated entirely um but we also live in real space as well so anyway um i just wanted to put this out there and uh as a public service announcement as a you know a pointer and uh in any case share any thoughts you have in the comments and i look forward to also please subscribe to politics 2100 look forward to uh seeing you in the next video thanks